What's up, buddy? So how can I be of service for you today? So last time we had talked, you just you and I, we had talked about doing some e-store su- stuff, and I would like to delve a little bit more in depth on that. And I got my pad here. I got some notes. Um, yeah. I would like to kind of know as far as that goes, like where's kind of the starting point and where do I kind of branch off and go? What mm. type of platform, if you have recommendations for that, kind of how to build. And then, um, yeah, it's kind of where I'm at. Okay, describe your vision. What is it that you are moving towards? What do you see? Let's go one years or three years or five years, something like that. But like, what is this? Yeah, let's do three years. In a thousand days, what does this look like? In a thousand days, this looks like a store where people can do prints of the work. They can buy hard copies. And then I'm trying to figure out how I would actually do like higher level or like higher monetary pieces like sculpture or like um, commissions and whatnot. I'm trying to figure out how to like wrap that up so it's not all pulled apart, but like a more uh, very tight and uh, um, very tight streamlined kind of business model versus being like this and this and pulling things out of thin air. So in a thousand days, yeah, I would really like to streamline this to a point where it's like, it's manageable. I kind of know where the content's going. I have some way to actually get some metrics in there, see how it's actually working, and then kind of basically really have a good business model going, something very solid. Do you want this to be only your art, or is this a platform for yours and others' artistic expression? I haven't thought about that yet. I would be open to it, um, but as of right now, it would just be for my art. Okay, and then is this going to be, um, is, it, is it a certain kind of medium? Is it all the mediums? Right now, it's just going to be the stuff I've been painting as of recent. So mostly, mostly just paint, no sculpture as of yet. It'll be like the next phase. Painting, sculptures, what else? Yeah. Skateboards? I mean, that would fall into paintings. But painting, <laughs> sculptures, um, and then custom, like if people want, you know, me to come through and like do a, a mural and whatnot, or if they want a custom piece, that's still going to fall under the painting though, and sculpture as well. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> okay, so the vision feels very simple e-commerce. Yeah. Um, nothing too crazy there. Um, do you, what is it that you want to do in the more near term? So say in the next year, now that we're, we understand three years, platform for your artistic expression and maybe others um, for physical goods, right? Or people would be able to upload what they would want you to do Exactly. Custom pieces, things of that nature. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Because I get like a lot of stuff. I'll get a lot of messages on my Instagram. Like people, like they'll ask me about certain pieces and I'll tell them how they're priced, but I get a lot of people asking for prints a lot of the time. And so if I had something casual that they could just go on and boom and then go and, you know, pull it off, it would be perfect. You know, just to get that ball rolling, that would be a good thing in the very near future. Would you sell originals? Uh, right now or would you be selling do you already have a relationship or do you know how to do um, you know the the prints uh, however you call that yeah they're technically to be uh, glissiers and they're just high high detail printings and renderings um, and I need I have a company that I can work through but I need to do a little bit more research on which companies I want to use and if it could be a point where I don't have I can make that automated that would be ideal it's exactly it. We want to have automated fulfillment if it's going to be on demand. Um, or you would have a limited edition runs that you would do. Okay, hold on. Give me two seconds. Think about like numbered prints, you know, like you're only doing yeah. 50 of this, this print and they're all signed. And so yeah. somebody could get just the regular copy or they get the one that's in between the yeah. cost of the, the original and yeah. the replication. Definitely thought about that. And there's a couple pieces I can do where I can like rearrange the color schemes um, via like Photoshop and whatnot, or do some actual separate ones that are exactly the same, like print wise, or just literally like prints. So yeah, totally down with that. Um, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Didn't mean to stop you. You're good. No worries. This is wonderful. Okay. So um, for e-commerce, it makes it really easy. Shopify is just the best period. They, uh, they used to have competition years ago. They don't anymore. (laughs) Okay. Um, Thousands of applications that you just click and install. And so there's all these different fulfillment options. You could do 
uh, like t-shirts, for example, you could have t-shirts made with these different graphics and have a company like Printful that just integrates completely. So you don't own any of the inventory, but you could sell, you know, whatever kind of shirts that you'd like and, and swag that have your awesome art on it. Swag. There we go. Shopify. Oh, I dig that. That's great. Does Shopify offer that directly or is that something I have to search for and add to it? No, no, no. So Shopify, think of it as, uh, you know, you have, do you use Windows or do you use Mac OS when you're on a computer? I usually use Mac OS. That's right. Okay. Or with a phone, you know, Android or Apple. Yeah. Always out. I'm all Apple products right now. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, you know how you can get the same apps for Android and for iOS? Yeah. It's the same idea. So Shopify has created an infrastructure to where they have thousands of apps that have the best infrastructure for apps that exist out there, maybe over 10,000 at this point. I mean, it's just growing by the day. So there's okay. lots that are free um, and there's lots of interesting options available where you can do just like one click installs for awesome applications like upsell apps that'll, you know, be intelligent around what one person's buying and can recommend other products and you can have an attached discount with that if you'd like. Um, you know, there's options for inventory management and understanding your, your details much more than the Shopify reports will get into. Uh, the themes that you can get on top, there's free themes that are just amazing. They're amazing. And you can do a custom build if you feel like it, but don't. You know, the whole goal is get this thing off the ground and start funneling your existing traffic there and allow people the opportunity to engage with you and, and transact you know, your, your incredible value that you create artistically through this magical space of creativity that exists in this infinite realm that you draw and in, tap into and then it just translates yeah. through your brush strokes, through your pen, through your mediums, your, your spray paint, whatever, you know, the mechanism may be. But we want to give people the opportunity first and foremost in an organized, healthy, systematic, clear, clean, connective way. And then, I mean, think about this. You can build an art community that's attached to this. So you have a, a group, for example, that's on the back end of people that have actually purchased your art. You could interview other artists and you could be doing podcasts, doing exactly what we're doing right here. And you get people to tell their stories and you get interesting conversations happening and just get a chance to connect with so many awesome people. I dig it. I dig it. I see where you're going with this. It's cool stuff, man. It's way cool. Um, you had mentioned on Shopify, what was, you were talking about Swag, what was that app? You had mentioned it really quick, a Swag app like for t-shirts. Print, yeah, Printful. There's multiples, but they're the ones that uh, seem to have the best reviews. Okay. I actually haven't used them yet. Uh, I've been wanting to, but I just, you know, just been a, a lower priority on the total poll, so we just haven't yet. Gotcha, gotcha, fair enough, but very much worth checking out. The main point there is it's on-demand printing. So just like how Amazon's created uh, on-demand printing for books, you don't have to do print runs that are massive. You know, they can just print them as orders come in and ship them, kind of like what 3D printing's doing. So it's a, it's a similar kind of concept where the biggest thing that I think that of value of e-commerce is the concept of leverage, being able to have potentially thousands, tens of thousands of eyeballs simultaneously paying attention to what it is that you're doing. And then those that are interested get to raise their hand and can give you some value in exchange for the value that you've been adding. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's great. Uh, wow. How long have we been on? 10 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> so what are the, you know, the, the things here that matter are um, first off is understanding the outcome that you want. So looking into the future like we just did to say, okay, this is actually just a personal expression brand for you, right? And it may evolve beyond that, but it's, it's a catalyst for all these interactions that you've had and people to be able to purchase your art. So this is how we're in, in the journey of entree progression. It's going from employment to self-employment right now, right? So we're kind of at that phase two. So the phase three is when you actually begin building your team. So you have help, you have people that are coming in, people that are supporting you, people that are either helping you with distribution or this is other artists getting involved and you know, you guys are, you're co-promoting or think of all the people that you know um, in your network that do incredible art 
and would love the opportunity to actually sell some of their art or replicates of what they've created, but don't have the platform. They don't have the opportunity. So if you create this, you blaze the trail, you show it's possible and build something beautiful, you can actually leverage all sorts of, you can have featured artists every month. You can have collaboration pieces. You can have, I mean, the sky's the limit, right? So that's kind of the journey is you'd be building a team then beyond that. But if you're still the driver of the art itself, then it's going to be at that phase two. It'd be like a self-employment kind of model. And so if that's the goal, that's fantastic, you know, but if the goal is to build something that happens separate from you, that, that entrepreneurship goal is that step four. And that's when your teams are actually running the operation. And so you're no longer involved on the inside by necessity, but you're looking at the business and you're able to help with strategy. You're able to help however you want, be a catalyst towards, but you're not required for things to be functioning. Totally, dude. That makes great so, sense. Awesome. So when you look in the future, what is it that you actually desire? You know, do you, some people want to be self-employed, like they want to be the artist, they want to be the person that's delivering that value, but there's going to be areas involved here where, you know, you might decide, hey, I don't want to actually be the one coding the website. I don't want to be, you know, messing with graphics or doing funnels for, you know, paid ads and driving targeted traffic, um, things of that nature, but that's how you can expand your business and your business model. Mm. Have you thought about doing like a big webinar for like a big group or like having a big talk and like talking about all this stuff? I just, I just got done talking to Tim. who's a real estate agent. We've been, I've been looking into houses and trying to get all the finances set up for that and looking at the next year, what that's looking like. It's looking good, luckily. But um, he had an interesting idea because he's going to kind of do the same thing and like kind of do these talks for people that are like first time home buyers and go through, going through the process and kind of what you need to look for. But like what we're doing right here, this is, this is fantastic. And um, yeah, man, if there's a way I could help like push this out and bring this out to other people, because like in what, 15 minutes, I, ha I literally have a full page of notes that I'm going to spend hours and hours going over, which is great. Um, do you have a platform that you're kind of working on, like what we're doing right now, but in mass? Yeah, thank you. Number yeah. one. Um, but that's the whole idea of Roots to the Fruits is, you know, we've been doing earth school, you, me, and Lee. Going yeah. in there and, and yeah, diving into the journeys of the soul and what this human experience is all about. And it's all connected. We're all one. We're all in integrity. We're integrated pieces of one whole. And so we take our whole selves with us. And so entrepreneurship, I believe, is the, the lifeblood, right? The, the economic engine is, is, it's not economics. It's not numbers. It's actually the heart and soul of people connecting and adding value. And in its purest form, that's what capitalism operates as, is an organized methodology for people to share value without having to have pre-existing trust. So yes, and that's why this is on the entree progression track of Roots of the Fruits. Um, all this again is, you know, this, this isn't out yet. It'll be out very soon. Um, you know, my content team at Avanti is doing awesome, but they're still pretty loaded. So I haven't given them any of our content to work with. Um, yeah. As far as getting more people involved, give me anybody that's interested. Let's hop on. Let's keep doing this. We can expand the groups. Um, that's like, this is my personal passion is I believe that entrepreneurship is the catalyst for personal freedoms and Dan Sullivan represents them the best, the freedom of time, the freedom of money, the freedom of relationship and the freedom of purpose. Sullivan. Dan Sullivan. Keep going, man. I'm listening. This is great. Yeah. And so the idea is entrepreneurship is all about adding value first. So this is the mindset, right? Employment is over here saying, hey, what are you going to offer me in exchange for what I give you? Right? Self-employment is saying, oh, I'm actually responsible for myself. Right? So how do I add some value up front here? Right? So I'll take on the business, but I'll do the plumbing. Right? I'm going to be the plumber that's actually involved. I'm, I'm the artist, but I'm also distributing, right? And so then as we grow from there, it's like, oh, wait a second. There's other people that have unique abilities that want to do the things that I don't like to do. And so then we start to get little bits of teamwork and you start to gain leverage that way. And so now it's going from what are you going to give me to, oh, I get to create value to, 
oh, other people actually have synergistic skills. Now we're operating in symbiosis. So the way that you build a self-managing company, as Dan Sullivan coins it, and I call that the entree progression, is by having unique ability teamwork where people are thriving and they're getting energy for each and every role that's being done. My bookkeeper, she loves bookkeeping. Like she sees, she's reading the matrix code. She sees what's happening inside and like, it's amazing. Her level of detail and the way that she thinks about things, how she can handle these, these different angles and, and like, it's so fascinating. You know, every day is a new day. Yeah. And I mean, dude, my brain would melt if I was just doing bookkeeping, right? Yeah. But give me the reports, give me the context, give me the dashboards. Like, what does this data actually mean? How do we connect with somebody better? And I get excited. Totally. Interesting. I love it. I love it. Interesting. God. <laughs> this is so much good stuff, man. Hold on. I got to take a quick note really quick. Dude, any, any friends, family, whatever, anybody I can help. I mean, I've been doing this for 14 years on the books, 20 factoring off the books. And yeah. <laughs> it's amazing the, the journey. Um, I'm in the process right now. I just got off the phone with an uh, attorney about um, selling off the retail space. And so I've been looking at doing a franchise model or, um, you know, a licensing or selling the, the actual physical studio and the hard assets and things of that nature separately. And so that's, that's what's in the works right now. Um, and so I'm going to keep the e-commerce side and I'm going to sell off the physical retail or license, something like that. Probably will not do a physical, like a legal franchise. Um, the advice I've gotten now from several people is around the complexity. Each state has, you know, their own franchise laws. And so when you think about it, you know, over the course of the last 14 years, the things that I, I can actually give to somebody in value by saying, hey, here's a package for you. Here's a complete business in a box. Like we've tried this that failed, we've tried this that failed. And so what you're seeing is actually standing on top of 90, you know, 95% failures. And so that's what somebody's buying. So it's goodwill, it's momentum, it's team, it's systems, it's strategy, it's structure. It's, it's all of those intangible, intangible elements combined that give a business a valuation into the future. So that's where that kind of, you know, that growth curve come from. And the, the least amount of risk that you have in that business, the more that it's worth. So that's why software as a service businesses, they have very high margins, even though the technical people involved that are building the products oftentimes are very expensive because they're incredibly smart and they're in demand and they're talented. Um, but the, the model itself you sell once and people keep paying every month. And uh, so you're measuring then what is your drop off rate compared to your growth rate. And if your growth rate is exceeding your drop off rate at a profitable level, then you have an exponential growth curve. So people have to opt out in order to stop using your service. I mean, how many things do you just have that are like three bucks a month? Like Google, they got $1.99 a month for me for extra storage, right? They've got, seven bucks a month per person for Avanti and the different accounts there. And I think it might be 10 now. And you look at these little incremental amounts, but through time, they add up to a ton. So imagine if you did a digital subscription and you actually allowed people, um, you know, you would send them out your physical product on a subscription basis. So it's like once a month, they get a new piece of art and they get, you know, 40% off of the regular retail price or something like that. 50% off. It's got to be compelling. But for your diehard fans, then you have a predictable revenue stream. They have a predictable outcome that they're getting. And your business, your enterprise value, the company's value itself is growing exponentially. So instead of it being like two or three X of profit, it can be 12 X of revenue. That's crazy, man. Isn't that just bananas to think that it is you know, crazy a company... If your company is doing $100,000 a year just for round numbers sake, and you're doing it incrementally, so you're doing it transactionally, which is one thing sold to one person at a time, and no momentum on the backside, your multiple is going to be very small because you have to reacquire a new customer. But when you're actually building something that has recurring in the revenue stream, you sell once in your customer for life. And so you measure the lifetime customer value by how long somebody's actually a customer 
in that trajectory. And then you think, okay, well, what are the tangential ways that I get to support and help that same person, right? We call that our ICP, that's our individual client profile. And that's the person that you're speaking to. It's the person that you want to help most. Digital subscription. I never even thought about that. And they could just be automated too with the prints, come out with a new print, new piece of art, boom, it's done, it's out, and it's already in there. Oh, that's and great. you have your whole back catalog. And so you could even do themes and something like that. But you have one offering to begin with. We always want to reduce complexity. Complexity is the enemy of execution. Complexity is the enemy of execution. Coin that one to Tony Robbins. Complexity, I will. It's the enemy. <laughs> I'm right, dude. So we want to think about everything through a lens of what is that ideal client actually want, right? Ideal client or ideal customer. Client being somebody that you're serving, right? So it tends to be bespoke. It's one-off, things of that nature. Customer is, is transactional. Either buying a prefit product. And so um, I, with piercing, for example, we call it clients, right? Because we're serving, we're catering. So a client would be somebody that's like reaching out to you with an idea and then you manifest something for them that's custom, right? Now, that's not scalable on the front end because it's all custom, but by getting leverage through replication on your website, every one person that wants to buy an original, they're supporting you. So think about this as, as what Tesla's doing. They have so many cars now, over a million cars on the road that are actually collecting all the data from all their eight cameras, their 12 sonar sensors, and their forward-facing radar. And so they're watching and they're matching and mirroring. What is it that the, the autonomous driving system wants to do versus what does the human do? And then they look for all that overlap. And so the neural net is growing exponentially because people are paying a premium to feed the data in the system you can do that same model with your art interesting interesting and now this is how we can talk about a career as opposed to just you know a hobby right because we can actually find leverage and scale awesome 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 oh man so the start is something really simple. What's your domain? What do you want your website to be called? And is it available? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Number one domain name. <laughs> and I would encourage you to think about this too. This is something that I love. Like my two favorite um, you know, mentors that I go back to as far as entrepreneurship goes, it's Dan Sullivan. He is just absolutely incredible. I've been doing this for over 40 years, like 44 years. Um, and is uh, I get into so much detail there and will through time. But check out anything he's doing. He's got like 12 podcasts at this point. He does three okay. things. He's the one that, you know, created the whole unique ability concept. And so he's like, yo, everyone's got one to three things that they absolutely are fired up about, constantly get energy, constantly excited about, fills up your batteries. And so his whole point is that to develop an organization, everyone focuses on what their unique ability is. And so you use the ABC model, which is three concentric circles. So you have your outer layer, which is the big one. And it's the things, he calls it A, I like to call it C, because it seems like, that's, you know, it's the stuff that sucks. And so these are things that just annoy you, suck, are frustrating, take energy. This could be people, processes, things, doesn't matter. Uh, the point is to just listen to your feelings and not judge it. So many uh, or, or so much of the time, you know, we want to rationalize. And so this is where procrastination comes from. Well, it takes energy from me. So why the hell would I do it? Right? When Dan's model is like, just listen, like, hello, you're <laughs> getting all this input and insight. And so if you don't want to do it, there is one or there's millions of people that do. And so the goal is to go out into the marketplace and find somebody that's adding value. So in order to do that, you need to be creating enough value to where you can hire somebody, right? And it starts with one, always does. And then you scale from there. So the outside is the, the layer of things that suck, right? The next one, the B, that's the layer of stuff that you just, okay, doesn't light you up. It doesn't, you know, inspire you, you know, it's like processing payroll. It, I don't like doing it. But I, I still do um, what I like for, you know, accountant or bookkeeper or somebody that's, you know, in that role to be doing that work. Yeah. 
And I actually brought somebody on. It didn't work out and I didn't, I chose not to rehire it, right? It was, it wasn't enough of a big deal for me to want to move it off the plate um, for the cost that it would have been, right? So I would have needed to generate more value in the enterprise for it to be worth it at that point for me to move it, but it's still a B. So I know it's something I want to move off the plate. Then we have, you know, again, so he uses A as the outsets. So I'll use his model. A is the stuff that sucks. B is the okay stuff. And then C is just that tight little nucleus. It's the bullseyes, the thing that light you up. That's it. Like you actually creating your art. That's one of your unique abilities. And so that is your one of three things, which means you only have two other roles that you can take on within this business sustainably through time. And so we want to build with that three-year vision in mind and work backwards to like, oh, what do we do to free up Grayson so that Grayson can just create art? Grayson can just create art and maybe Grayson just interacts with other artists and is, you know, doing the podcast and doing the interviews, which happens to be a marketing mechanism to get, you know, expansion of ideas out there and get cross-pollination of other people that have similar ideas and thinking. So there you go. That would be two. Dan does three things. He thinks and creates new concepts. He hosts workshops and he does podcasts as his marketing flywheel that spins everything. He has about 120, 130 people on his team at this point. Uh, the organization uh, is, so he used to coach individually and he would get great results, but there was always more month at the end of the money, you know, he was <laughs> yeah. constantly on the, the flywheel. And he met his spouse Babs. They met at a business conference and, um, she actually quit her role, what she was doing in order to support him. She saw his genius and how he can help people, but he wasn't able to scale. And so her whole mission was how do I free up Dan? And so Dan had his little chunk and Babs started building the teamwork. No Babs, no coach. Strategic coach is the brand, right? He calls it coach. And so that's the framing. He says it all the time. No Babs, no coach, period. And so the premise of their entire organization is, does this support, does this free up Dan, does this free up Babs, and does it support their relationship? And then everyone else gets the exact same treatment. But it's got to start with leadership first. This is where trickle-down economics is different from a trickle-down um, mindset, right? You could argue all day long about whether, uh, you know, economics from a macro level, like tax structuring and things of that nature has a trickle down effect, but inside, like what is culture, right? How, how would you define culture inside organizational culture? Let's say. Yeah, I'm going to do a pass and I'm going to put that to you. I'd like to hear some of that because I'm drawing a blank. Have some yeah, I think, uh, shared, shared mindset values. Um, and okay. you know, I like to think about culture or brand as uh, what people say or feel about you when you're not around. All right. So the culture of Grayson is like it's warm, hospitable, it's creative, it's energetic, it's tangential, it's experiential, it's uh, you know, it's creative, it's clever, it's interesting, it's interested. That's the culture of Grayson as I see it. Cool, man. What you said. Yeah, and so within an organization, it's just an amplification of all of that. So that's why, you know, people talk about vision, mission, and values so much. And I'll tell you, I mean, it took me over a decade to actually take that stuff seriously. <laughs> right. No. I was like, why, why do you need it? Yeah. But the, the reason why it's needed is so that everyone has a North Star that's unified. Yeah, unification. Yes. And so, again, drawing this back to you and this, this startup phase is like, okay, so it, it's not very challenging to create a website. In fact, it's very easy. It's step-by-step -step process. It's not very yeah. expensive to create a website. Very easy. It's, you know, they, I think they have 90 day free trial right now. Um, if there's a coupon code, we can put it down in here uh, into the link um, in the show notes, but uh, you know, Shopify is not very expensive. So I get an affiliate link and put it down there or something. And hopefully there would be some sort of commission involved uh, just as yeah, an right. FYI, full disclosure. Cool. Um, this is, how, this is how we do it though. We, we create you know, a referral network, an affiliate network. The whole design is that you have your audience or the people that you resonate with and then somebody else has theirs. And so one way that you can cross promote is by just sharing in the value that gets created. So you share a percentage of your sales. And so especially with your art, it seems like that would just be 
a natural win-win. That's what we're doing with Avanti is other piercers are coming on, right? And they don't have an online catalog to sell and they can't sell anything in person. Well, guess what? We have a platform and people can actually use their promo code and then they get paid. Customer gets a discount, they get paid. Makes sense. And all these things like, you know, this background right here is so, uh, uh, I guess it's just synchronicity, right? Like the idea is that we're in a global society and that little band of light right there could also be perceived as electricity and the World Wide Web has given us the ability to interact globally. And so everyone on this planet, or, or at least half the population or so right now that has access to the internet, you know, it's billions of people, three plus billion people. And, and you know, we have the ability to create micro impacts for each person and we get micro value back. Like it's, it's so crazy to think it doesn't, it doesn't take a lot. So for example, you could teach courses on your philosophy around the creation of your art, right? And these courses don't have to cost a lot, but somebody can walk through your mindset, how it is that you excel. You do incredible stuff. I would love to understand more about what it is that goes through your mind, through your heart. Like what happens? How do you get in flow? How do you get in state? Why do you choose this medium? Why do you choose this color? How come, you know, this one came across, it feels like messy and you were like, ah, oh, I didn't like it at first, but now it, like, it has this brand new meaning for me and it's tied to this, you know, experience, it's person or, you know, what is it that, that grabs you and so you walk through that journey together and then you just package it up in an organized manner, give, it, give people the ability to give you value for all the value that you're creating. That's why the whole point of what we're doing here is to actually give so much value that all it takes is 1% of the people that are involved or you know, listening to raise their hand and say, oh no, I want to give you some value back. Copy that, awesome man. How good does that feel when 99 percent of the people that you're interacting with you're just giving value to awesome. not even expecting anything not not asking for anything just giving value it's a good feeling man and to connect on that level man oh man these are a lot of good dots to <laughs> oh my god hold on i gotta go make a doctor a little doctor some of these notes really quick okay so what would be your stop point right now um, by the way, I'll, this recording will be live in like two hours. So I'll be able to shoot you the, the link in the audio. So cool. don't worry as much about your own diligence of notes. Um, okay. You'll be able to listen to this and go over this as many times cool. as you feel like. Cool. And um, what would stop you right now from actually following through with this vision? I, well, I think before this conversation would definitely be asking myself the question, like, how do I even begin to start this whole process and where is this going to go? But after this, I don't really see why not. Because it's just, if you break it up into steps and just go step by step, process by process, you can slowly actually get to a certain point. And then from that point, if once you do get to that point, it's like, okay, we kind of know now what the next step is, what the next step is. And it's like, as you, if you, this is how I visualize it. If you're going along and something is like, you're going through a coloring book and something's already partially colored, it's like, oh, it's got a little bit left and I'll finish that. And then there's like the next page and you do a little bit of that. And it's just this little thing and it gradually, the whole thing is filled up and it's completed. And I feel like that's what this process is for me. And as an artist, it's like, that's the easy part. Like I can draw the thing, I can fill the thing up. As far as, um, you know, entrepreneurship goes, that's where I'm kind of like, what is this coloring book? How do I start to fill in these lines? What are the lines? And I feel like this talk right now, I don't know how long, what, it's been about 50 minutes and it's like, I'm already like brains buzzing. I'm like, okay, I can check this out and do this. And so it's like, I have so much more than just the first steps. And so I think this planning process going out like a thousand days or more is so helpful because it allows you to get out of that small little spot where you can be like, I don't know if I should do it. Where do I go? And it's just like making a choice, going with the choice and actually having a lineage to go down. Now, nothing's set in stone, but having something is so much better than having nothing. And like the, me caught the relief I feel right now after having this conversation and these notes and being able to go back over this, I can't tell you how good that feels, you know? So thank you very much for that. It's, it's very illuminating to have that knowledge. I can say knowledge is power. Um, but it's just, it's a very, uh, it's very eye opening, but at the same time, relaxing thing to be able to be like, okay, I have a plan. This is where I'm going to go. And this is what I'm going to do. And this is how I'm going to set it up. And if it doesn't work, I'm able to change things out because there are options versus just being like, I have no idea where this tunnel's going, you know? So, thank you. Like an e-commerce store, yay!
Yay. What does that mean? <laughs> right? E-commerce, that's cool, right? Uh, thank you, brother. I appreciate that. So what came up for me in this process is you're helping to draw out the linearity that I, I oftentimes struggle with because I'm more of a tangential thinker and I have a harder time writing stuff down and like focusing independently. So like as you go in the zone with your art and you're connecting with that medium and how you're doing your expression, um, this is this is my art. It's actually an interaction with yourself, right? It's it's interaction with people where the ideation happens. It's the the, the creativity starts flowing, and you know the one plus one doesn't equal two, right? Yeah. It equals this infinite potential because we have so many new openings and perspectives to bring to the table. Um, like you bring it up a webinar, for example, is a, a great idea. But what I would love to do is actually just build this whole thing out with you. We'll capture and document the whole process. Okay, and cool. that way we can share this whole process with whoever it is that wants to learn how to build a store. And we can actually yeah. use yours as an example and I'll hold your hand the whole time. How's Sounds that? Great. Hold me, dip me, sweet <laughs> off <my> feet, dude. <laughs> no, I'm totally game. I think it's great. I think it's really good, you know? Because the proof is in the pudding, you know? And right now we're making some pudding, dude. I think it's yeah. really good. And it's so easy to get lost in like, oh, well, I need to tweak this. I need to tweak that. I mean, dude, I've been doing that recently. I've, I've been doing it. And then as I zoom out, I'm like, what am I doing? You know, I, I need somebody that loves this optimization process, that loves the data-driven approach, that wants to get in there and look at the analytics and how are people actually going through these pages? Why are they dropping off here? What are the pages that are actually drawing the most traffic? How can we structure things in a way that's more organized and cleaner and less friction so that our end user actually can get to the result they want faster, right? Or they think about us as a reference point, even if they're buying elsewhere, like they're creating a structure and a methodology so that somebody can intuitively navigate their body they can understand like, oh, I've got a nose piercing, cool. And it narrows down to those things. Now we're creating bundles so that people actually have pre-selected options because the, you know, complexity being the enemy of execution or body jewelry has more complexity than like, dude, it's crazy. We have gauge, we have length just for posts, right? And so each one fits in certain piercings, just like your nose ring, right? Like there's exactly. a threadless top that goes in there. It's two pieces. And so now yep. you already have to choose between all these different gauges and all these different lengths and hope you pick the right one. And then you've got all these different tops. Well, how do I even know? Like what's a 1.5 millimeter compared to a three? Like you know, hold it up. Like where's my how context? Do so, yeah. yeah. How do you put that all together? How do you get someone to figure that out? And that's where, yeah. That's where you build your customer base from knowing that stuff and being able to have that and asking those questions, you know, that's key. Super key. Yeah. And we can cross promote Avanti means to move forward. So we could also help, you know, we could overlay some of these podcasts, for example, we could maybe have some of your art as like a featured artist that's, you know, showing up on our page. We can leverage our, you know, 20,000 organic visits a month right now just to get eyeballs on what it is that you're doing. Dig it, man. Yeah. Synergize it. Yeah, man. Let's do it. Symbiotic. I love it. Ah, it's crazy. Ah, digital world, man. Awesome. Isn't that crazy to think that there's oh, 20,000 yeah. people just organically that come to us every month and that, that number is consistently growing, but that's without really like in, in full, um, in full effect, you know, really leaning into our affiliate strategy, which I think is going to be the big game change here is getting other content creators to be involved <laughs> And so they actually are going to create content and it's not us being able to share their content that matters. It's them sharing yeah. that content that gets 10 X, 20 X, 30 X more reach than we could ever get. And so then yeah. we can also amplify that with some paid, right? And then this all links to our people that are showing up on the web page. And then, yeah. you know, you know, based on buying behavior, you know, based on where people are going, what terms you're searching for, then you can retarget. And so you can actually, you know, stay present, retargeting ads are very inexpensive, very inexpensive because you've already gotten the customer to your page. And so if they haven't bought something, but you notice when things follow you around the internet, it's very cheap, it's yeah. very cheap to do that. And you stay top of mind. So when you do things in a way that adds value consistently, yeah. then you can do that and people get excited. They don't get the, the brain fatigue of looking like, oh, here's, you know, the right hand side of, Yahoo Mail. 
I know you use Yahoo Mail. The right hand yeah. side, do you even see it? Say what? Do you even uh, see the right hand column of Yahoo Mail? I barely ever, barely ever go there. Yeah. It's ads. It's blocked out of my mind. If I ever show up on Yahoo Mail, I see those ads and they don't even, they don't even register. That's what yeah. happens to all of us, man. We have, we have only so much, um, you know, consciousness yeah. that we want to focus on. And so ads become irrelevant, but this gives you some context of how things can actually scale in an organic and, and natural way. And so the way that I'm talking about affiliates and leveraging that kind of ecosystem would be the same thing as you doing collaborations with other artists, you know, yeah. and being able to uh, cross pollinate your oh, efforts yeah. and, and do mixed medium projects and things of that nature. What's really interesting about what you're talking about, it reminds me of biological processes in, in um, like with bacterial colonies, like literally you built this business, right? Multiple businesses. And it's like, okay, you got this business. It's represented by a bacterial colony. Now you create this thing by working with other businesses and, you know, kind of cross having that cross reference it's called a fruiting body, kind of reach the fruits fruiting body. Now you work and now you can grow and you can actually reach this customer base, this resource in a grander scope, just because you are having this connection and you realize like, Oh, Hey, I'm going to promote you. You're going to promote me and we're going to work together on this. And together you guys actually are able to reach a lot more and grow, you know, in, in size and proportion. And it's really interesting. You can talk about this digital landscape of um, capitalism doing that because it's these same forces in nature are actually now, you know, getting into this virtual landscape. And I find that actually fascinating just as a side tangent, just listening to talk about all this. So it's really cool. It's really, really cool. You start thinking about it that way. It's, it's all it's biomimicry. Yeah, we we don't do anything that's actually new. We're just copying nature in our own unique ways. <laughs> totally, totally. Yeah. Ah, interesting. Interesting. You just gave me a huge idea, man. The the fruiting bodies. I've been thinking about roots of the fruits as a tree, mm -hmm. but that's not actually the move. It's it's mycelium. There that's you go. The root network and the fruiting bodies are actually mushrooms. Would you be interested in doing some sort of a creative like a the logo oh, kind yeah. of style and structure yeah, around that up. you want to hear a fun interesting story so i went on this hike and i'd love to take you on it um possibly if we have time when you come into town but i actually found i'm pretty sure i found the largest let me see the network or it's one of the largest organisms in the world it's like five uh it's like five miles but um yeah i was on this hike I'm not gonna say necessarily where but i found these mushrooms and i looked it up and they're exactly the same ones and there's they're all over. Like you hike for like a mile and you just see them popping up all over. But yeah, totally found this like gigantic creature mushroom that's hanging out there. And it totally reminded me of the fruiting bodies, but yeah, totally. I'd love to do some artwork. Love to do it. Love to do it. Totally honored to do that. Um, and we would love to do that hike or oh, any yeah. hike uh, yeah. while we're in uh, town. So yeah, it's uh, super. Are you working Tuesday or are you still off? I go back to work on Tuesday, unfortunately. I okay, go back. so maybe we we could bump it up and we could do it over the weekend. Maybe we could do like weekend? Sunday or something like that. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna be up there. And, uh, we'll be leaving tomorrow or uh, Friday. Because I had already put out a message for some people, possibly like Saturday, to do it. But we could always move it to Sunday too, because I do have you know Memorial. They do have Monday off as well. But yeah, we could totally Post do it. Memorial it's Day. <laughs> Monday, yeah. Is it? Isn't it Memorial Day? I think I it, yeah. Yeah, I know the days are like. You got a big <laughs> brain right now, man. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, um, yeah. I'll talk. We'll talk about it later about all that stuff, and I'll explain it in full detail. But um, yeah, man. Fucking my see little bodies, man. Roots of the fruits. Yeah, the fruiting bodies. This is great. Maybe what we do is we actually build your website and build roots of the fruits in in lockstep. We could do that. We could totally do it. I mean. You look at the underground mycelial network, everything grows in this giant, you know, ecosystem and everything works together. That's how it, every, like they transmit energy, nutrients, everything's allowed to communicate. So, I mean, it's already happening. So might as well create a fruiting body while we're at it. <laughs> we did. Why not? That is so beautifully stated. Oh my goodness. Thank you. So good, my friend. Okay. So um, what's your domain going to be? What's your website? I'm going to need some time on that. I need to, do you have handles that you've used in like, you know, games or, you know, uh, you have, I mean, obviously there's the Grayson, but you could also just do your own personal name. It's probably not taken. It's a unique name. Yeah. Yeah. I thought, uh, 
I could probably do Matt Mason. I don't know if that's been taken. Um, little, I would like a little bit of anonymity, autonomy, nimity. Mm. Yeah, nimity. <laughs> need more coffee, but yeah, when it comes to that, but I need to figure out something that sounds right. When I when I was doing some writing and whatnot, and I would post stuff, it would be from like Matt Grayson or Grayson Larissa, but not like the full MGL in there. So I need to need to splice that up somehow. Or or bone I'll in bet, the dirt. I'll bet Matt Grayson's available. Bone in the dirt. Yeah, bone in the dirt. That's probably taken. Let's uh, look it up. Well, you can look it up. Let's do it together. What are you on for domain names? Go Duck Duck Go or Go Daddy? Uh, you know, Go Daddy is a great jumping off point. But if you go with, um, I mean, basically any platform gives you a free domain when you sign up with them. So like Shopify, for example, you'll get a domain included, uh, you know, when you sign up. Copy that. So I'm going to have to. It's like 14 that. bucks a month or 14 bucks a year. And it's actually has, um, they have domain protection, like the domain privacy. That's normally like a $15 a year add on anyway. So it's actually a great place to be buying domains too. So maybe I'm looking at Grace and Larisa. All right. Let's see if anything happens. Nothing for bone in the dirt. Use that. Is is Matt Grayson taken? Yeah, it is. What are Grace, you on? Grayson's Grayson's are you on? Dot com is available. Which one is? Grayson's Art. G R A Y S O N S A R T dot com. It's an interesting one, but it is personal branded. That was one of one of the things that I wanted to bring up is the value. Dan knew that strategic coach wasn't about him. So he didn't want it to be attached to his ego. So strategic coach. And so the way that it works is people that were students are now teachers. And so he's up to his third iteration. He calls it the game changer. The first one's self-managing company, then it's the 10X ambition, now it's the game changer. And so he's got all of these people that he's been helping through time. It's then they're leveraging that education for other people. And so that's how his network has grown. Um, versus Tony Robbins, he's taken the entire opposite approach. It's all about Tony. And so he has massive, massive brand or credibility, but not brand mobility. He can't really sell that brand. He doesn't have, people don't pay to go to, you know, see the other people. And I mean, <laughs> Joseph McClendon's been working with him for 30 years. He's incredible, but he does his own stuff and it's all separate versus if, you know, if Tony would have said, hey, this is, um, you know, it's not about Tony, it's about everyone else, which is actually where his heart position is. It's ironic, it's just because it's attached to his name as him as the change agent, the activator, the catalyst. Um, so think about that, you know, does this, do we want, because you can buy as many domains as you want, they're very inexpensive, you know, it's like a buck a month, essentially. Um, yeah. So, you know, you could do Grayson's art, and that's how we could start, or whatever you feel like there, but it could also be you know, uh, like, what is the purpose of this? Are you actually asking me or you want me to ask myself that question? Yeah, both. Is there anything that comes up for you now? Like, what is, what is the purpose? Like, what is it that drives your artistic expression? <sighs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> what drives my artistic expression? Uh, life, I guess, would drive my artistic expression. Um, you could even get into a nature versus nurture debate over that. Um, but, I mean, it's... It's, it's feeling that need to create and creating and putting it out there in the world, feeling that song, that vibration inside of me and sending it out. You know, it's that, it's like, it's like when you have a sneeze, you don't just hold the sneeze and you let the sneeze out. So, mm. so something along those, it's not, it's even, it's not like it's a choice either. It's actually, it's, it just kind of has to be done in a sense for me. And so as far as inspiration goes, it's a, it's, it's this, it's this feeling vibration, it's movement. Um, yeah, it's this flow of energy. Wow. So as far as the domain goes, to add some of that in there would be nice. Um, the flow of art. Flow of art, yeah. The artistic flow. The, artistic the, flow. En the, the energetic equation. The energetic equation. Oh, is that taken? <laughs> but it might be too complex, though. Hold on. That's where I go, dude. I mean, you see entree progression, roots to the okay. fruits. Like... My first, you know, cell phone accessory company was called Mobile Innovations. People had no idea that we were selling like cell phone stuff. <laughs> Is this a tech company? <laughs> yeah.
yeah, I gotta, I gotta mess around. I gotta play with some words right now, but I'm willing to bet I could find something. I'll find something tonight that works in that realm for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I like the entree progression, the wordplay. Yeah. Domain available. Crowfish art. Let's do that. Let's do the crowfish. Crowfish art? Yeah. Let's add to cart. I'm doing it right. I'm on GoDaddy right now. No, no, no. Don't buy it there because remember, it's going to come with your Shopify plan. So go to Shopify. I'm setting up the Shopify account right now. Oh, uh, hold on real quick. Go ahead. I'll get you the, the link if that's good with you. The link for what? Um, for the affiliate code for cool. Shopify. Cool. We'll see what they come back with. So for store name, it should be crowfishart.com or just crowfishart? Well, it would be .com. Okay, cool. How hard is it to change the name if I decide I want to change it? Is that going to be a problem? Super easy. I own a bunch of domains, man. But I can change it through Shopify. I'm not stuck to that one name if I decide to change it mid-process. Yes. Okay. Yeah, because what it is is like, like I own AvantiBodyPiercing.com. I own AvantiBodyJewelry.com. I own IamAvanti.com. I own uh, DailyPiercingDeals.com. Like, you, can all insert, you can insert literally like, okay, I, I want to change this, you know, this domain and I want to insert this domain for this website. Cool. 100%. Woo. All right, so I'm just getting the, the activation link right here is going. Let's see what we got here. Apply today. So... It might not be something that's immediate. Um, and if not, I'll give you a separate promo code to use. That's cool. When's he going to ask me for the promo code at the end? Or do I have to go through the link that you're sending me to do this whole Shopify account? Because right now I'm setting it up. Yeah, let me see. Yeah, um, okay, so it's going to take a little bit for me to get this set up. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look up SROs. Um, yeah, use Smart Marketer. See if that code works whenever you get to that point. Just smart marketer. Okay. So it's asking, it might give you a discount. Smart marketer. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's as one word or Ezra Firestone. Okay. Or Ezra Firestone. Yeah, E-Z-R-A, last name Firestone, F-I-R-E-S-T-O-N-E. -E. Okay, cool. Okay, so I'm on the tell us a little bit about yourself. Are you already selling? I'm not selling products yet. What's your current revenue? Zero US dollars and just getting started, and then industry will be operating in painting. I'm guessing that's where I would go. Right. Yeah. Okay. All they're all they're doing is just organizing their back end so they understand who's in what category. That's it. Are you able to share your screen? Uh, I can't do that at the moment. Um, because uh -uh, I'm doing this on my computer, and right now I'm talking to you through my phone. Can you point it? I might. Let's see if I can do that. Give me a second. We're going to switch things around, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to switch this around. We are going to see just how Uncle Matt does his biz. In the behind the scenes right now. In the behind the scenes. That's good. All right. I need to figure out how to hold this all in place. Give me a second. Okay, so let's do a first name. Let's do it. Boom. Oh, look, it's already filled it in. How nice. And then, this is, thank you, whoever did that. Thank you, computer. And then we're going to go all the way so we can see what's going on. I'm going to close. Okay, and then we're going to go enter my store. Mm hmm. Okay, cool. Oh, let's change the state. No, we're not in Alabama. Not in Kansas, Kansas anymore. <laughs> not in Kansas anymore. Okay. okay. If you could turn the computer a little bit more, we're a little cut off on the right side. You're cut off on the right? Which one am I turning it? Uh, uh, uh. No. Right, just, just to move the videos, the camera, so it shows a little bit more. There it is. Perfect. Is that where we need to be? All right. We're going to move down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So trial started. Awesome. So okay. uh, we can do, see how it says straight up or just to add a plan. Have you already put in your domain? Yeah, I already did. Okay. Perfect. And so is it actually showing up that way? Yeah, it's crowfishart.com. Perfect. Okay. So do the getting started up top. Okay, or select the plan or learn more about getting started. You're, you're in the trial. So um, okay. I don't know if you need to select a plan yet. Okay. But you're so just going to do the basic plan. It's probably 29 bucks a month or something. 
Okay, so why don't we just do select a plan then? 29 every 30 days. That works. Let's add a credit card. Tyler, I can't thank you enough, buddy. Likewise. Dude, this is this is great. This is so fun. Thank you for reaching out. Thank you for desiring to connect. Like, yeah, man. It's awesome. Okay. So we added the product. What do you think? Customized theme? Yes. Okay, let's go to customized theme. Image text without customers. You can set into your brand, select imagery in the text, image with text. Oh shit, I gotta go through all this. You know what I have to do? I have to upload photos because I don't have them on this computer. They're all on my uh, I, my iPad and my digital devices. Which I'm Perfect. Crying. So this is this is awesome. So then at this point, uh, leverage your Dropbox or leverage Google Drive or whatever you feel like. But having right. a shared, you know, uh, house for all those uh, images right. that has backup. Gotcha. So Google, yeah, I need to do that. Okay. Yeah, and then as you can see, there's theme blocks there on the left side. It's really easy. You can drag and drop those things around. The little eyeball is what shows and what doesn't. And then you click yeah. on add sections and you can add more. Shopify okay. has made so many strides. It's, it's all drag and drop now. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. And awesome. so when, when we're in town here, uh, you know, this weekend or Monday or whatever, you know, yeah. ends up being, um, we can actually work on this too. Cool. Cool. We can do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And things should be open too. We can also, God, wouldn't it be nice to just go have a beer? Oh my God. <laughs> oh God. You know how nice, you know how nice that would be? I miss it so much. Just, just one beer, just sitting there. Just, just one. Mm. Just oon beer and I'll just sip on it. Oh, oh, I know. They opened up a lot of the counties here. Everything except for Multnomah County is open. Um, where are you guys staying at when you come up here? You don't want me asking. Yeah, staying at my mom's. Um, we've got the the rig here, and they have they have a rig. Um, this promise has allergies for cats. My mom has three cats, and so we're gonna try staying inside, but uh, most likely we'll be staying outside. Yeah, and getting kind of do the the distancing thing. Um, yeah. There is more related to pregnancy around COVID. Oh, um, it's 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 not as good the stats for non-pregnant people are, you know, getting better and better through time as we're learning more. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we are being aware of that. Uh, whereas prior to that, we were, you know, less concerned. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, we'll have to figure that out for sure, man. Um, what I'm thinking with this, um, what I need to do is I need to sync all the stuff up and cause I think it would be, I don't know if you want to film this while we're actually building this thing and I'm actually going through and we're having the images on there and moving stuff around, or if you want me to go through and do that and then we come back and kind of do an overview on this. Um, yeah. what are your thoughts on the process? Yeah. I mean the, the actual process is not what we don't need to like show how to upload pictures. You just click on okay. it and you just add your pictures and stuff. So yeah. go ahead and, and just start playing with it. And then okay. we'll have like a coaching session around, the, the structure, the layout, the imagery, okay. the copy. Um, okay. And then once we've got a baseline here, then we can actually focus on next steps, which is getting your products uploaded, right? And that's actually gonna be part of what you'd be doing right now. Anything that you've yeah. created, man, anything you've created, put it up there and then okay. just put inventory tracking on and say it's zero, so it's sold out. So your product would be sold out and so you'll have your pieces that you have available and then you have your other ones. Um, and so you would need a price with each piece. And so this is, you know, pricing and packaging conversation. Um, okay. So I, I would encourage that anything that you have that you're not interested in selling, that you still put up and you list and either list it as sold out or list it as, you know, uh, in the personal collection as a reference, something like that. Cool. Copy that, dude. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So exciting. So easy. I love it. So you'll be up and live just within a couple of days. You can do it right now. And you know, your domain's already live and all that stuff too. So oh, yeah. you can, uh, you can start sending people. Um, but if you want to get a little polish first. Oh, and, polish. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, no, 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 no. It's, it's the artist's way, man. You got to polish it, you know, 
but also don't get lost in the complexity. Still got to have some stuff out there. And this is why, this is why it's so good to record and have these sessions because it's a push because when you're like, Oh, Hey, we're going to meet up. There's this date it's coming. And that pressure is such a motivator, you know, it's just like, you know, it's like current in the stream, pushing that leaf or whatever it is along having that versus just waiting for the wind to pick it up straight off the ground. You know? So I, I thank you for that. I think it's a great, it's a great uh, motivator, you know? So. Likewise, brother, this is, it's, it's uh, nothing but synergy here. Dude. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm totally digging it. Ah, oh, so excited. So excited. <laughs> wonderful. Um, All right, brother. Will you have a wonderful day? Is there anything else uh, in closing? Yeah, dude, you're going to be a dad. Congratulations, man. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I'm sending you and uh, promise some good thoughts, man. Seriously, give her my best and uh, we'll keep in touch and we'll be meeting up soon and we'll finish this. We'll get this thing rolling. Sounds awesome. All right, man. All right, brother. We'll talk to you soon. Yes. All right. Live long and prosper. All right, man. All right. Till next time. Bye.